hell is separation from God. And many of you are living in hell, and you know it. Young person, listen to me. It doesn't matter how nice of a car you drive. You may think that when you get that car, then you'll be happy. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how beautiful your girlfriend is. It doesn't matter how popular you become. It doesn't matter all the things in life that you acquire. Without Jesus, it's just a living hell. It's a constant seeking after things that can never satisfy. Listen to the words of the Rolling Stones. These rockers that went to the very top of the mountain of fame and of wealth and of riches, having everything that people are seeking after. And when they arrive there, they begin to sing, I just can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> it's not just them. Bono sings, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Bon Jovi sings, I just want to live while I'm alive. Listen to me, young people. Learn from those who have gone before you. They have everything you're seeking. And when they arrived at the top of the mountain, they looked around and they realized that it was all empty promises. Nothing satisfies. You know, if the medical community was able to do what those scientists said they're going to do, and people began to live for hundreds of years and old age was no longer a thing that people died from, can I tell you what the leading cause of death would be? Suicide. Because after a few years, people would realize that this life stinks. It's just endless troubles. It's emptiness. It's darkness. Without Jesus, it's hell on earth. That's what it is. Now, this all sounds pretty depressing, doesn't it? But see, I'm an evangelist, and I've come to give you good news, but I can't give you the good news without giving you the bad news. So I gave you the bad news, so now here's the good news. That angel, he may have looked intimidating, lots of wings, a big fiery sword, a very rugged countenance, but he was a softy. In fact, I think he was the very first evangelist. And if you could have gotten close enough to hear his, his words, or to hear the message coming from the heart of God. It was not one of death and destruction and curses. What that angel was doing as he was flashing his sword back and forth was he was saying this, Adam and Eve, don't come back in here. This tree of life, it cannot help you now. But as he flashed that sword, he was pointing away from the tree of life. Where was he pointing? He was pointing into the future 4,000 years later. God will give you another tree. Not with beautiful leaves and shimmering fruit, but upon this rugged cross will hang the mangled, naked, tortured body of his son. And from Emmanuel's veins, will flow a river of life. This is the river conference. Now you know where the river comes from. There is a fountain filled with blood and it flows from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. And when you drink from that fountain, that is the source of eternal life. And this is the record that God has given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son does not have life.